Okay, we were on the final episode of how to fully explore Act 7.1. I'm really tired and my throat hurts. Um, you guys have seen these videos over six days if you've watched them all, but I've been doing all these all back to back and they're all like 15, 20 minutes long. So my voice is dead. So, starting off at number one, we got Particle Protector. Um, they found it was an 85% chance to glance attack, so that's really fun. Um, this is just really fun and interactive. You got Micro Reflect, whenever they glance, you take shit ton of damage. And then size matters. This is the variant two node. So, um, small champions, heavy attacks cannot be glanced. So, if you have been a small character, pretty much only heavy. Medium care champions can heavy and intercept. They won't be glanced. Guaranteed to not be glanced. So, use Archangel, you know, heavy. You know, you just can't take the damage and it won't get glanced. Large champions, special attacks, intercepts, and heavy attacks cannot be glanced. And then extra large champions, they won't, can't get glanced at all. So, who's the best team? In my opinion, um, for this one, I brought Quake, Magneto, Archangel, Ghost, Warlock. So, Archangel's really good for this fight. You can bring in any extra large for this fight, like a Venom, or pretty much any extra large character can just clap this whole path. Um, you got this guy, um, pretty much once again, any extra large character can clap his cheeks. I used Archangel for this fight, turn off free gen, just make sure to heavy only. Archangel for this fight, Archangel for this fight. So you can use Archangel for four of the six of these fights and then just bring in like an extra large to deal with these two, pretty much anyone really. And then basically the final boss is just an Ice Man. It's just it's Ice Phoenix, but it's Ice Man. So uh, power access one, so you gain a lot of power um, if you're under one bar power, but if you're above it, you don't gain a lot of power. Encroaching stun and cold fusion. Whenever a cold sniper falls by expires, um, the defender gains 33% of a bar power over 6 seconds, which isn't that big of a deal, um, unless you're getting hit by special ones. The big thing to worry about is Crotion Stun. Just make sure you throw a special attack before this happens. The power access one is super easy to have power at all times, so it's just a big Iceman. Just make sure um, you have an Iceman counter. That's pretty much all this is. So, Archangel and Extra Large. You don't even need Archangel. Pretty much any Extra Large character can cheese this one. I think Venom can do this entire path by himself. I mean, Red Hulk can do this whole path. Warlock can do this whole path. Pretty much any extra large character can clap this. Path two, destructive feedback, impatience, small arms, cosmic wrath. So, uh, small arms, pretty much a nothing node. Cosmic wrath, your cosmic attackers gain 125% damage. And then impatience and destructive feedback, the nodes you pretty much gotta worry about. Uh, or not really about, but just notice. The destructive feedback is the yellow shield node. We've been over this. Don't hit them while they have the yellow shield up if you don't want to take damage, unless you're using Ghost. But you can cheese this path really badly with this node, Impatience. Whenever a Cosmic Attacker fails to trigger a buff due to chance, they have a 100% chance to trigger a Fury buff instead, increasing an attack by 80% for 7 seconds. So, and this can stack. So, basically, use um, Gamora, and if you don't get a buff on your hit, you're going to get a Fury buff. And you can stack these buffs... She hits like a truck, OG Thor hits like a truck. Any Cosmic Champion hits like a truck here. Um, the only thing you gotta watch out for is, um, uh, what's it called? Is the fact that this is, um, there's some hard fights. I used Magneto for this fight, Ghost for this, Magneto for this, Magneto for this, Magneto for this. Someone who has Armor Break for this is nice, like, like a Medusa, uh, Corvus. Anyone who has Armor Break is pretty nice. Just turn off this guy's nodes. But then once again, you just need a counter for Ice Phoenix or just Ice Man. So yes, yeah, pretty easy so far. Now we go to Pad Three. This is Footloose Transducer, Stun Vulnerability, Aggressive. So aggressive, they're just very aggressive. Transducer, Transducer. Uh, the Defender re uh, rewards more power when struck, but its presence drains the attack's power. Basically, you gain more power on hits, but you slowly gain power over time. Um, Footloose. Whenever they activate a special attack, they become unstoppable and unblockable for. Unstoppable and, and evade for twenty five sec uh, for seven seconds, and then stone of vulnerability. Basically, I just used Captain America Infinity War and just parry heavy, and then with the stone vulnerability, my damage was crazy. Captain America Infinity War can do some high path by himself. Um, pretty much any character I think in the game can do this entire path solo, as long as you just slow play and don't attack while they have the unstoppable for Footloose. So honestly. This is probably one of the easiest paths. There's no restrictions whatsoever. You just do more damage and stuns. So you can use Corvus and get your first charge with the sun spot. It's a really easy path. I'm not even going to explain it. It's just an easy path. You should not struggle with this. Then we got this, um, uh, what is it called? Scarlet Witch boss. It looks like Spider-Gwen, but it's Scarlet Witch. 
Um, backblast, your critical damage is doubled, but if you exceed 5% of their max health over 4 seconds on a crit, you take a massive incinerate debuff, so don't use people that hit that hard unless they're incinerate immune. Um, staggering beauty, when close to the defender, you gain stagger debuffs, so just if you rely on buffs, it's kind of annoying. When they throw special attacks, um, your controls are inverted, and it's Scarlet Witch's special attack, so just, just remember it's inverted controls when she activates them, and that's pretty much it. So... You also want to bring in a poison immune character because it's Scarlet Witch, so she can um, put poisons in you. So just really, a Human Torch melts this fight. Um, Ghost destroys this fight. Archangel destroys this fight. There's pretty much a lot of good counters. You just need really someone who's immune to poison, and unless they hit super hard, immune to incinerate also, or some way to deal with that. It's pretty easy. Um, I mean, Human Torch just destroys this fight. So yeah, it's a pretty easy boss in general. This had this kind of difficulty, uh, a little difficult. It has Clapback, Eat Crow, Buffet, and that's it. So Clapback, whenever a poison or any debuff really on them, um, you place on them, it'll get placed back on you. So if you're using, like, fucking um, Nick Fury, you're going to just die. And then Buffet, every 7 seconds, the next buff is a 15% regen. It's really hard to out-damage this with even, like, Ghost. So it's a very strong Buffet. But Science Attackers gain immunity to Nullify. Whenever a Nullify a poison fails to apply to the attacker due to immunity, they gain a fast uh, fury for uh, eight for six seconds, and they're gaining immunity to nullify, which means the buffet node will never activate. So just use science characters for this path. Quake, Captain America: Infinity War, Human Torch, pretty good options for this path. They can just destroy it. Um, so yeah, um, just watch out for this guy because she can place poisons. But um, if you're using science character, they're uh, um, they're good, but um. Just make sure to bring a poison for this fight. So just bring a shit ton of science characters for the path and you should be good. And then a lot of the science characters are good for this boss, so you should also be good. Um, Human Torch Quake are best options, I think, because Quake and Human Torch could just destroy the hard fights like Mrs. Sinister, um, Ebony Maw, and Doctor Doom. And then just bring like a poison mean for this fight, really, and you should be good. Like Mysterio, I think, is good for this fight, honestly, because um, he can put the passive heal block, um, so she can't get buffet, um, and then what else? And then, um, also she, he's poison immune, so he's fine, so Mysterio would be good for this. Then we got pass five and six, so we got recharge, power shield, and perforate, bubble shield, so bubble shield is a nothing node, perforate, both champion special attacks are unblockable, so if you want to use ghost for this path, you do not need to bring wasp, you just need to bring hood. If you want to use that synergy, recharge. While blocking, the defender generates 15% power every second. While the attacker is blocking, they generate 10% power every second. Both champions' combat power rate is reduced by 100%. So you can really only gain power by holding block or using like Hyperion or something. So, and then it has power shield. So basically, you want to use someone who has strong specials, hold block, and then third special. It's fully unblockable, and yeah, it does damage. That's super easy, not much to it. Then you got this Gwen Perian boss. She has. High energy diet. The defender has 99% chance energy resistance. So, did not use energy characters for this. While the defender is inflected by an incinerate shock cold snap debuff, the defender gains 100% of a bar power every 10 seconds. So it's not that big of a deal, considering, once again, none of these bosses have their special 3 active. This is a Gwenperion. It is Gwenpool, but it has all of um, Hyperion's abilities and specials. Selective time stream, every 20 seconds, um... That, uh, defend itself is instantly restored to full any debuffs on them are removed this cannot be repented with ability axe reduction um, I'm pretty sure it can actually like Archangel turns off this node but okay sure um, actually no he doesn't turn off this node but his neurotoxins are passive so they, she, she can't shrug them off and they they prevent healing um, incinerate and shock prevents this regeneration also a passive healing uh, they can't be reversed or healing it can only be prevented so basically, you want to bring someone who has passive heal blocks or incinerates and shocks. Any character that has a shock debuff is good. Any character that has a um, incinerate debuff is good, like a reliable one. Uh, any character that has um, passive heal block, like for example, I think Torch with Nova Flame could work. Maybe I don't know if that's the best option. Mysterio works. Warlock works. I can one shot this fight with Warlock. Um, you could try to do her full damage. You could try to do her full health pool in twenty seconds. Some characters can do it. Maybe. Um, maybe, I don't know. Basically, just bring someone who can, um, passive heal block or as a shock and incinerate. So it's not that hard. Like, Warlock's really good. Mysterio is really good. Um, 
anyone with the shock's really good, like Sentinel, um, Doctor Doom. Anyone with Incinerate's good, like um, Massacre, I guess, maybe. So yeah, it's really not that hard of a fight. It has Hyperion specials and abilities, but once again, you can't activate Special 3, so you never have to worry about his power. Then we go to the final path. Biohazard and Acclimation and Coolant Leak. So, do not use a robot, basically. Um, so don't use a robot. It's Biohazard and Acclimation. Biohazard, you know how that works, and then Acclimation, every five hits on the combo meter. Mutant attackers purify all bleed incinerate and cold snap debuffs currently on them. Any debuffs provide this way I provide the attacker with 10% of our bar power. Um, this is fine, I guess. But it kind of hurts characters like Magneto and Omega Red that benefit from the bleed. But, you know, it's fine. It's honestly fine. Um, just use anyone who's immune to bleed and you can just cheese this whole path. Um, you know, you can... You know, a Mega Red Ghost, any of these guys. A Mega Red this whole path. Yeah, you can Mega Red this entire path, actually. So, yeah. Um, a Mega Red the whole path. Ghost, you can pretty much do the whole path. Um, just use someone who's mean to bleed. That's pretty much all it comes down to. It's really not that deep. Um, except for robots. Don't use robots because they'll die. Um, so, yeah, it's not that deep. And then it's the same boss. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this final video. Go like, and subscribe. I did Act 7.1. Fully itemless, and this is the final quest. So maybe I'll do 7.2 itemless. We'll see. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We can like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.